All right, welcome back. We are in the Red Stick Spice Company test kitchen. This is Smidgen, the cooking seg segment of Smidgen. And shops open, customers are here, and we're in the test kitchen with Cameron. Hello. Who's been helping us with cooking classes for years now. So I'm excited that you're here. So we just finished up an interview with Renee Pio with Pennington Biomedical Research Center. Pennington is here in Baton Rouge, and they were part of the team that developed the DASH diet. So the DASH diet targets lower sodium eating and cooking, and but is an overall healthy diet. Um, but you work the store floor a lot. We get a lot of questions about salt. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about that in a minute, but we want to get started with our cooking because we chose a dish that uses some very specific spices and flavor combinations that make this an extremely low sodium dish that you don't miss it like super full flavor. So we are making za'atar chicken cutlets with a parsley salad. So Delightful. before we talk about all of that, let's get going. We need your fat in the pan because we're about to start sauteing the chicken. So let's get that going over high heat. And I'm gonna talk about these chicken cutlets. So we've got most of them pounded thin here, um, but I left one for us to show folks how we do this. So the chicken cutlet is a really, really lean piece of meat. So the things that give me a lot of flavor, the skin and bones are gone. But the good thing about it is it cooks quickly and it's very, very convenient for a lot of folks. So we do want to show folks, now we love a bone and skin on chicken thigh, right? Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Um, but we do want to show folks how to use um, this cut of chicken because it is so very convenient. So the way we do this is it's already pretty thin on its own, but you need a little piece of plastic wrap. We're going to get that down and get that chicken cutlet in there, get that wrapped, and then we've got a nice heavy meat mallet, and you don't have to go crazy. We just wanna hit that a couple of times to get it nice and thin, and more than anything, you wanna make sure it's even so that there's not a thick part at one side and a thin part. So that is it. So this goes in with our other chicken, and we are gonna combine our seasoning for this chicken in this sheet pan here. So we need our flour, a quarter cup of za'atar, and Aleppo chili flakes. And we're gonna use three quarters of a teaspoon. So we've been working with Aleppo chili flakes a lot here lately mm -hmm. in the kitchen because they're a great example of a chili that does bring heat, it definitely does, but it's got some sweetness to it and just a good flavor. Like the chili has a good flavor. Um, and they're a great way to demonstrate that chilies are a spice that have delicious flavor notes to them, but aren't just hot. So we're gonna get that mixed up. A lot more fancy than your average cayenne pepper. Right. I think in this part of the country, we are kind of stuck on um, things just being hot and your mouth burning for a long time afterwards and that we're not really getting the flavor of what the chili tastes like. Okay. So here are your tongs and you're gonna go one at a time and make sure that you get it into the flour mixture and press it, press exactly. It. And then you wanna get that into Take the fat. Oh. And what oil did we use? Uh, the oregano. Which is a perfect complement to these uh, Mediterranean, moving into Middle Eastern flavors with the za'atar. All right, so we're gonna get those in there and then these will cook and get nicely browned on one side, and then we'll turn them and move to our parsley salad. So, right. Tep, what has been your experience with folks coming in asking about salt and maybe folks who have been put on a low salt diet? Yeah, it's definitely kind of a hard thing to avoid because somewhere out there on the interweb is an article and people ask like, what is one thing in food that you can't live without? And I can guarantee you the number one answer is always salt. Because right. what is food without a little bit of salt right. added to it? it tastes right. like nothing. And it's a necessary component in a lot of dishes. You know, we learned in our 60 minute Spice Master class yesterday, I mistakenly called it 60 second Spice Master. And that is, we're good, but we're not that good. Um, so we learned in that class yesterday that salt is a necessary component because salt is a chem chemical element that changes the nature of food. It also tastes good and that, you know, pepper's a spice and those kind of, those two need to get separated. 
um, or get a divorce, we said yesterday. Um, but yeah, salt is a necessary component. It's actually necessary to sustain life. You know, we need it in order to s sustain life. But in the standard American diet, there is, especially in processed food, there is probably too much salt. We're using salt the wrong way. Okay, so we've got two of the cutlets already flipped. How long were we there? Literally maybe one and a half minutes. Yeah, not, Super not quick. even three minutes. Yeah. So what's happening here as you flip them? Hi, GBD, how are ya? <laughs> GBD means golden brown delicious for those that don't know. That's a term we use in pretty much in every single cooking class. So a couple of things are happening in this, with this, in terms of this golden brown and delicious. Mm -hmm. There are two ingredients in Zatar that are helping us along right here with this gorgeous color. One, sesame seeds. So what are happening to the sesame seeds in here? Getting toasted. Yeah, they're getting toasted. So not only is that delicious, but it smells amazing and it's giving us a great color. The other thing that's in here is sumac. Nice. So sumac is that tangy, almost has a pine note to it. Big, big, big in Middle Eastern um, cooking, can be used as a single ingredient. Sumac and lemon want to go out on a date together. Indeed. So yeah, sumac lemon chicken, we do that a lot here. Really, really good. Sumac whisked into a vinaigrette, fantastic. But again, that tang, that's super interesting. And not to fool your palate because there's no salt there, really to be super um, enjoyable, you know, a, a really good flavor. So sumac is a great one to have in your cabinet if salt is something you need to reduce. And then that meatiness, that umami from the, from the sesame seeds are also super satisfying. So another great one to have in the cabinet if salt isn't a possibility. So we pop the heat way, way down on these because these are just gonna take a second to cook. And I'm gonna get this chicken out of the way because you and I are gonna work on the parsley salad. So you've heard me talk quite a bit about when salt needs to be reduced and what kinds of flavors we can bring to the party that are complex and satisfying that aren't in ACL, that aren't sodium. So we've talked about sumac, we've talked about the umami from the sesame seeds. Where else can you get umami? Uh, mushrooms, mm -hmm. truffles, uh, soy sauce, all, yeah. the, all the Asian stuff. Lots of sodium Fish in sauce. the so soy sauce, but when you move to dried and ground mushrooms, like our smoked puccini shallot mustard blend, um, those are great complex flavors. It's super fascinating because they feel like there's salt in there and there's none. Um, so I'm always interested by that blend, but there's another thing in smoked porcini shallot mustard blend that is another flavor that is really appealing to our palate when it comes to trying to satisfy that saltiness in its mustard. mustard. So not prepared mustard, not yellow mustard in a uh, bottle, but we're talking about dried mustard. So it's a complex flavor that gives us um, a lot of satisfaction on the palate. And that is a blend that brings all those things into play. Okay, so we've got to make the parsley salad. And people are like, parsley salad? Like what? And was this not a showstopper at our chicken class? So not my mother's chicken, fantastic class. It's one of our Milk Street Kitchen um, cooking classes. We are a Milk Street partner location. And this is a class that uh, they trained me to teach and it was a winner. You know, I'd say I saw a lot of customers posting on Instagram yep. and Facebook of all the things they made when they left and cooked them again. So we need obviously parsley, but we need scallions. And so I need you to chop for me these two scallions. Okay. Um, you know, we're gonna go all the way, good three quarters of the way. We want most all of it, but we're gonna get that into this bowl okay. along with the parsley. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time picking individual leaves off of this parsley. I'm actually going to take a lot of the stem with it. So I'm going to take most of the stems with this parsley. So you know that parsley stems don't ever, we either are eating them and using them in spice blend, in um, cooking and cooking classes, or they're going where at Red Stick Spice? In the freezer bag, going in stock. Yep. So parsley stems bring a ton of flavor and color to stock. And are you done with those already? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, so ton of flavor to stock and they don't go in the garbage can. So all I wanna do here, I could tear it, but I'm just gonna run my knife through it a couple of times just to break it down so that it's a little easier of a bite when you go to take a bite of it. So these go in our bowl. 
And then go ahead and drop our green onions in. Or scallions. Okay. And we're gonna save this for our stock as well. So those two, all of that goes into our stock bag. And then how are our chicken, how's our chicken looking? Looks done give to it me. The, give it the press test, or we feel like it's done. Yep. That's gorgeous. Feels good. Okay. So now we are going to, if you would, squeeze that lemon in here. Ah, stop. Zest it. Zest it. So we're gonna zest it first and then cut it and squeeze it in here. But I love teaching folks to zest this way, which is essentially upside down. But first of all, you can see each time before you get to the pith of the lemon, which is bitter, which we don't want. You can also see what you're accumulating. So we need a half a teaspoon. You can start eyeballing, mm -hmm. you know, what you're getting. So obviously we have too much. Yep. Um, but go ahead and get about a half a teaspoon in there. And then once your lemon is zested, then you cut it and juice it. So zesting a cut lemon not we've done it we've all been there yeah uh we we're like we are out of lemons um but yeah definitely zest before you juice and so now we'll juice we need a tablespoon of juice which is usually about the juice of half a half lemon ish. especially with these being large i feel comfortable that that that's the case but that goes in there and that is the salad like it's as simple as that that's gorgeous and we mix that all around and then that tops our warm, the warm chicken cutlets go on the plate or platter. Um, we plattered these up at the class and then the cold salad on top of the warm protein, you know I live That's for that. Mm -hmm. Live for that, that warm protein hitting the salad. Do we have smell vision This is amazing. So the last thing we need is just a touch of our oregano oil and a pinch of salt in here. I would say, you know, yeah, somewhere around a teaspoon. Yeah, make it um, glistening and a little bit of salt. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and then that is going to go on top of our cutlets. And again, love the cold salad on top of the warm cutlets. So we are going to move. How fast was that? Super quick. Yeah. Thirty minute meal. Yeah. Oh, if the, if even that long. And so we're going to move to get that plattered up and get a taste of that here in just a second. I'm excited. I've got one little last task to do. I want to chop these walnuts. You know, what's cool about this dish is this is a dash like textbook dish. Lean protein, healthy fats from walnuts and olive oil, bright leafy greens, um, and very little added sodium. You know what else I realized? You remember when we taught this class and the, the dish was good, but we did admit that the chicken was a little over salted. Mm -hmm. Because there is a step of salting the chicken cutlets before we dredge in the za'atar and flour. We forgot that today. Yeah. So I'm so curious, I bet we're not gonna miss it mm -hmm. um, because there's just so much flavor here. But not only is this a great dash, perfect dish, this also answers the number one question in the sh shop here at Red Stick Spice, which is? How do I use spices? So. How do you think this dish answers that question? How do we do it? Well, I think the first thing pretty much that you see when you walk into the store is like the three huge racks of spices. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so overwhelming for people. Okay. And they kind of come from a place of scarcity with it. They don't really know when to use it or how to use them. Okay. And I think whether that be a cooking class, kind of like the one we had yesterday, where we kind of go over everything you oh, really need to know. Was about that the, the spices. sixty second spice master? The sixty seconds. Or the sixty minutes. Spice sixty master. minutes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that whether it be we sign them up for a cooking class or we have an hour conversation with them about yeah. paprika until yeah. they can bring one home that they're going to use. Right. Um, I think we just try to help them and figure out. And this chicken just kind of uses pretty much every type of spice that we have yeah. in the store in yeah. all the categories. It's really super complex. Lots of broad flavors here, but all in one spice blend in Zatar. Okay, let's platter up that chicken. Okay. Um, it's falling apart <laughs> because it's so perfectly cooked and tender. So that chicken gets plattered up and we drizzle it with our pomegranate balsamic. So again, another layer of flavor. We're not talking about a ton here, 
just a drizzle to give it a sweet note to contrast against all the other things going on on the plate. And I want to point out that that sumac is what it colored, bloomed mm -hmm. in that fat and colored there. I'm going to let you drizzle pomegranate and then we're going on top with the salad. Right, salad first it. or balsamic first? Balsamic. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then we're going to get that salad piled up on top. And we're going to leave a little bit of the salad behind. Um, you can certainly use it all, but that makes it picture perfect. And then a nice sprinkling of walnuts on top. Hungry? Of course. OK, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, I've got these for us. So we'll get our plates ready. Probably don't even need a knife, um, especially a steak knife, probably just a butter knife, but might even be fork tender. So a cutlet, a nice pile of that salad. I see that pomegranate vinegar drizzled on there. Yummy walnuts. This looks amazing. All right, let's dig in and see how we did. How, and again, definitely under 30 minutes, for sure, for sure. if not faster. Pretty phenomenal. Yeah, excellent. So, lemon, super fresh parsley is what hits you first. Um, I love the crunch from the walnuts. This is a fantastic dish. Really low in sodium, perfect for dash, but perfect simply because it's delicious. I agree, I look forward to eating the rest. Thanks, Cameron, this of was course. so much fun. Thank you All for right, having we'll me. We'll see you guys next time.